This is uh, Tom. This is West Coast Ramble, and we are doing another episode. And thank you very much for joining us, friends. And uh, please be free to uh, comment on our show here. That makes it a lot of fun. And I wanted to introduce our uh, friends here that you know. We'll just introduce them anyways. This is Paul and Big Sandys. Let's say uh, there's. Let's say it to Paul. That's Paul. Hi. And that's Big Sandy. Welcome back, guys. Hi, welcome back, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you know what? It's really exciting to have these two guys here. They're uh, musicians and they're working all the time, but you know them, don't you? And uh, today, what we're, what we're going to do... Oh, hold on a second. You push my camera. Oh, damn it. Well, I can't hear you. <laughs> now we can hear you better. Okay, there you go. There you go. So anyways, what I was saying was, uh, Big Sandy, we've got a, a fun show today because Big Sandy, he went to Europe and he played <laughs> some music and uh, he's going to he's gonna do a slideshow for us. Is that right, Big Sandy? Yeah. I'm going to show some images from uh, the Fly Right Tour did in December. Um, we were there the whole, entire month of uh, December. Uh, first time to be away playing uh, out of the holidays, but especially to be so far away. But yeah, it was a good one. And we're going to talk about that and show some uh, some pictures and a video. Hey, what do you know? And uh, my good friend Paul over here. And uh, you've been uh, seeing a lot of gigs and stuff, and you're going to give us a rundown of music. Is that tr correct, sir? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Got a good list of some shows going on in Southern California this month, so... Looking forward to sharing the info with everybody. Get people out there supporting live music. Right. Okay. And before we go to that, the, here's what's going on with West Coast Ramble. We are going to go to a unknown event in April, and we're going to do some live hits over there. We're going to do. We're going to be there Friday and Saturday, and we're going to do live hits uh, four on Friday and four on Saturday. So if you're there, come by and see us. We're going to go live. We're going to show uh, some of the music and some of the uh, fashion cars on the other day. Maybe try to interview some guys that are there. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we're trying to get ramped up for that and also looking for a major sponsor who they might want to uh, sponsor the West Coast Ramble by that. But my good friend Paul is going to be there. But right now, um, oh, and uh, Big Sandy, what are you going to be doing at? Uh, if I need to, if I feel like jumping in, instead of just jumping in, I will raise my hand. Okay. <laughs> Whatever you That's want, sir. That's a good sir. way to do it. Whatever you want. Now, I heard you guys talking about this uh, mysterious event when I was trying to do the call in from, from England. It was like four in the thirty in the four in the morning over there or something like that, and it didn't work. There were some technical difficulties in the hookup, but I heard you guys uh, 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 alluding to this mysterious event. Now I'm a little bit slow. I'm not the the sharpest. Uh, uh, what is it? The, I'm not the sharpest not the, pencil in the garden toolbox. Go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give me a, a, even a, just a little a, a little clue, a, a yet another clue as to what this event might be? Don't I mean, tell me. I'm going to see if I can guess. Another clue. I think it's something you've been to maybe okay, once Okay, well, that could or, be anything, right? Once or 20 times, maybe. Okay, so you're coming over to, to, to Lori's house, are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, the, hey, hey. Lori? I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, something that you're usually dressed up for and... Usually have a microphone in or around your oh, mouth. Oh, okay. So, so an event that I've worked worked an event at, you have in, the past, worked think, at yeah. in the past. Right. But and West Coast Ramble will be there. We will be doing there. a live broadcast from this from said event. Is that correct? From said okay, event. Okay, thank you. That helps. All but right. West Coast Ramble has never ever been there. Maybe we've talked about it and done a show about it, but we've never been there. Yeah. Well, and thank uh, you. Sorry to interrupt. No, no. I'm glad you, you did. Uh, oh, and, wait a minute. Wait. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Big Sandy, you know, you're a fun guy, you know, and you're fun on the mic here, but you're also fun on stage. Now, I think now is a good time to go into Big Sandy's tour, his, his slideshow that he uh, put together for us. Uh, well, it's not really a slideshow. He just gave me a bunch of pictures, and we're going to go through it. Is that okay with you, Big Sandy? Sure. Oh, we're going to jump right into it. Yes, that, that's right. Um, I was there for a month, along with uh, Ashley Kingman and the... The your your the Euro fly rights. So we'll talk about that in a second. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure in which order these images will show up, but I'll I'll comment as as uh, you flip through them. Okay. Right. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Well, first off, let's start with the calendar. Okay. Yes. Uh, this was the flyer I made for the list of shows we did. Um, there was a one-off. Uh, we we flew over to Switzerland. We were there for less than 24 hours. We did a private event. Yet another event I can't talk about. Um, <laughs> nice. uh, it was a clothing optional event. What? But, uh, yeah. No, it wasn't. But anyway, and there's the list of the all the the rest of the shows were in in the UK, and uh, 
Yeah, yeah. It, and it was a great time there. Yeah. Yeah. And I also wanted to show, like, uh, so let's, let's go over your band that you got here. Let's see if I got, there we go. Okay, now this is the lineup that we were touring with. And, and this is, uh, basically, this is our, the, uh, for all, all our present and future uh, European events, it'll be this lineup. Ashley Kingman, of course, he's, he's, he's my uh, right-hand man up there on the stage, sometimes on the, on the left side. But uh, Ricky McCann, who used to be with the band, uh, let's see, there was uh, Bobby. Uh, first, there was, yeah, he, he was in the lineup quite a while back before he moved to the, to the back home to England. Um, but he, he's back in London, and whenever we're over there, we use Ricky. And Wally Hersom, he's the guy in the far right, uh, all bundled up there. It's it was so good. It's so good to tour with him again. Uh, Wally and I were uh, were the two who started the band back in 1988. We recruited TK to join us and uh, kind of started off uh, what is still going on right now. Um, and it's it, yeah, it's good cool to hang out with Wally again. There's yeah, there's the three of us in the van. Uh, riding along, listening to music, having a good time. Uh, Ashley, who was not in the picture, was behind the wheel. He 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 does uh, all of the driving over there in Europe. Oh, that that reminds me of this. I, I saw this picture. What is this? Well, uh, Ashley also packs the van. He has it down to his science. Um, <laughs> man, we had to take a picture just so we knew how to pack it the next day yeah. and the next day. But this was picture number one. Actually, in all honesty, it, it kept changing each day. And actually, uh, equipment was added to it as we went on. Somehow, we were it was like a snowball. We, we gathered more equipment as we were going on, another amplifier, another speaker. <laughs> um, anyway, this is, this is how we started the tour. Okay. And uh, now it's all missing. Oh. Okay. Now, the first week I was there, I got to go to King's Lynn, which is a lovely town in the uh, i guess that would be the the northeast of of of, of england to, to hang out with my girlfriend ruth there and this is me after uh actually about 10 days hanging out with her this is me in in, in the in the wc as they say there oh cool yeah in the toilet as oh, they say oh. hold on there oh sorry hold on go back yeah uh this this, this is a uh, that's me uh about to take the train into london to do our all day rehearsal with the Fly Right Boys and then begin our tour. Wow! Oh, dig it, man! And then there was, there was another funny picture here that I saw. Let's see. Oh, yeah, this is uh, this is hilarious. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I did get into a little trouble over there. Um, I had a few too many ales <laughs> over there. <laughs> I'm used to drinking tequila, which actually technically. It's, it's stronger, but I'm not used to drinking ales. Yes. I had too many ales, and this is how the night ended up. Got okay. that. <laughs> and then, and then I got some uh, random. Oh, wait, there's all well, the guys. Well, look at there. And before the, the the tour began in earnest, we had to stop by and visit our friend Carl Little. Little Carl. Um, he actually, uh, we borrowed an app from him, and he, he we stopped by his uh, place of business and picked up the app added to the <laughs> cluster inside the, the van and he also uh helped us promote part of the tour and he put together the show that was the big grand finale of the whole thing in london so that's little carl there along with the fly rights and myself cool. and, then this and is... you can see how cold it was there oh, yeah. can't you feel the the can't, don't you oh. get shivers looking at that picture okay well on a night off Ruth and myself uh, took a trip into London and went to a record hop there and ran into this man, Mouse, who was a, a legendary figure there on the in, in the European rock and roll scene as a DJ and um, a, a, as a as a singer and, and songwriter. Um, Ashley, my guitar player, started off with his with Mouse's band, Red Hot and Blue, back in the '80s, and it's always uh, great to run into to Mouse and uh, kind of a trendsetter when it comes to. Uh, the records that are spun at, at record hops. He still is. Yeah. Then you got another fella here. Okay. Uh, that's uh, Kevin Ellis on, on another night off. And this is in Kings Lynn. Uh, another guy who was in that band Red Hot and Blue with Ashley back in the 80s. Uh, he's a saxophone player. Uh, he came to King, Kings Lynn to visit, and we uh, we spent the, the afternoon in a pub. He told me he didn't drink anymore. Next thing I know, we were both... Uh, Drinking. I think uh, 48 sheets to the wind. What the? I tell you. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. 
And, that, and there, there's other. There's a gal in the street. Please, what is this? Now, the, I've, I've talked about Ruth uh, a few times here and there. Now, there she is, right down the street from her house. And I just thought that was a nice, lovely shot. Um, that's uh, the far end of her street. Uh, yeah, with backlighting and uh, kind of like a like a color film noir. Ah. Well, there's there's one other painting that you did here. What was this? And uh, actually, this is where she lives. Um, oh. And I, I took this picture because if you you see that green door in the left in the middle of the the frame there. Well, we were we were walking around town and uh, we saw a rack of postcards and we both uh, spotted it. Well, look at this. This is your house, but on a <laughs> postcard. So took a picture holding the postcard up to the her place of residence. I won't give out the address. Oh yeah, of course not. Then okay, and then uh, okay, and so you had another. Uh, I had another. And that's me. Yeah, that's uh, you. <laughs> wearing the exact same outfit I am tonight, which is a. What a that's thing. awesome. What hey, a you thing. know what? And then, uh, but tell them a story. You and Ruth went to a club, and then what happened at this particular club, Big Sandy? I'm sorry. You. you oh yeah, yes. you guys went to a club, and uh, yeah, yes. Um, there, there is a, a the the rock and scene is still going strong in in, uh, in London. Uh, Ruth and I took the train down to London and, and went to a record hop. Um, what's it called? At, at the two R's. Um, and uh, the the place was packed. People uh, jiving and jumping and dancing around to music. And we walk in the door. We kind of find, work our way through the crowd. And we start. I hear one of my songs. Chalk it up to the blues. Uh, <laughs> Here we go. Let's look. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and that was fun. It was. It was a. It's kind of a neat thing. Like uh, I don't always get to hear my own music in that sort of setting, so yeah. it's cool to just pop in on a, on a club and and see people dancing to, to something you've recorded yeah, over the years. That's pretty cool. Well, well, thank you, Big Sandy. Let's see. Is there? Uh, I think we pretty much covered a lot of stuff. You got a lot of flyers here, but I think people get the gist of it. Did I miss anything? Let's see. Oh, I don't. Oh, oh, how about um, the city of York was an amazing place there and uh okay that's right uh, the fly rights and myself had a chance to walk around the city and, and it's you just get either a, a real sense i mean anywhere there but especially in a town like york uh, of what a young country we are and the, and how steeped in history they are there uh around the entire city the roman walls are still very much intact and uh it puts things in perspective man uh and it was a great thing to experience with with my old pal Wally. There's a picture of him underneath in that same spot there. You know, yeah, you might not find it right away, but uh, I see it right there, Wally. Oh, anyway, it doesn't matter. York was it was my first time there, and uh, I think for all of us it was our first time to hang out in York, and uh, it yeah. was something else. Yeah, yeah. Seemed like oh. It seemed like you guys did a lot of stuff over there. It wasn't just uh, not just musicking, but you guys. It was had time for to me. It was the perfect stuff, right? uh, uh, ratio of uh, working, you know, doing the shows and having personal time. Uh, yeah, hanging out with my little lady, as uh, some people <laughs> say. You call them little ladies, don't you? But anyway, uh, yeah, it was it was a it was a uh, a lovely way to spend December. My first my first Christmas away from my family. Oh yeah. At this age, I finally <laughs> broke away from the family. But it was a lovely thing because I was with a with future family. There you oh, go. oh, hey, let's hey, <laughs> that's pretty exciting. Okay, hey, uh, and, and by that I was talking about Ricky. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he's he's a handsome gentleman. He he talks well, funny, uh, but he's good. Hey, uh, hey, Paul, this leads me to you since you're a handsome gentleman. Hey. Speaking now, of handsome gents. Now now is your turn to do your job and tell us what gigs are going on and what's because I heard it's blowing up uh, this coming month and you know everything that's going on. Well, I know a little bit. And so if you're in Southern California this week, we got a bunch of good gigs. Actually, this whole month, really. Tomorrow, 
I will be fortunate enough to be at the House of Blues watching Social Social Distortion. They're doing one more show over there. I think it's a makeup show. And then they're going to keep rocking. Later this week at Club L in Ooh. Anaheim, we're going to have the Martinez Brothers opening up for the Go-Getters. So if you haven't seen the Go-Getters recently in Southern California, that's a really good venue to see it. It's all for tips and donations at the door at that place. So it's all of the money's going to go to the band if you go to Club L to see the Martinez Brothers and the Go-Getters. Then at Campus Jacks on the 14th, we got one of our favorites. He's been on the show, Dale Watson. He's going to be in yeah. town. Love Dale, great guitar player. He's funny, amazing songs. Hopefully Celine will be around too, so that'll be, be good. Yep. She'll yeah. be along for the ride. There you go. Now we're going to skip forward a little bit. The mighty, the one and only Reverend Horton Heat will be at Alex's Bar with the Surfragettes opening up two nights in a row, 18th and 19th of January, guys. So get your tickets for that. If it hasn't sold out already, I bet you it will because Reverend Horton Heat sells out Alex's pretty easily, especially with the Surfagettes joining on. That should be pretty good. Then the 21st, down at Godmother's, where James Invilt has turned that place into a high-class stage with an amazing sound system. We're going to have the Lucky Stars down there, guys. Yeah. That's another good venue if you're in San Pedro. Check it out if you haven't been there yet. It's been upgraded heavily thanks to James. Don't miss it. Then, once again, Campus, ah, Campus Jacks, the 22nd, we got Tom Kenny, and he's going to have uh, Johnny Ramos opening up at Campus Jacks, and that's January 22nd. You can go to StellarShows.com for dot both. Net. Oh, dot I'm net. sorry, dot .net, StellarShows.net for both the Dale Watson show on the 14th and the Tom show on the 22nd. Get your tickets now. We were just at a sold out show yesterday, so I bet you that sh one of those. I bet you those shows might sell out too, guys. Yeah, so. well, the Dale Watson show is sold out. Oh. I just noticed though before. Uh, actually, on my well, I didn't notice on my actual drive over here because I never look at my phone while I'm on the road. Never. But I noticed that uh, they just added a few per seats on the perimeter of that show. Dale Watson show was sold out until earlier this evening. There's a few more seats available, uh, so. Check StellarShows.net for that. Yeah, that's going to be a good one, guys. Yeah, yeah cool. Mosey's going to be down there for Reverend Horton Heat. Yeah. And we hope a lot of you show up to Club L for the Martinez Brothers and the Go-Getters. The last time I saw Go-Getters was at Godmothers, so it's going to be good to see him. I'm glad you mentioned backyard. that because that's right down the street from my house. I'll be there. Yeah. There you go. Cool. So that's what I got for the rundown for local shows in Southern California. What's, oh, what's Lloyd saying here? Yeah, let, well, let's, uh, Lloyd says, am I your plus one for social D, Paul? <laughs> I don't know yet. I'm going to find out tomorrow if I even get one. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you get to go backstage, Paul? I got a minus so, three. I, I don't know. I know I will be interviewing somebody, but I don't, I'm not trying to be pushy because he's just, he's a, he's a friend, you know? Yeah. Not one of my absolute best, best friends who I can feel like I could annoy, like, you know, Jimbo or George A. So I want to... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was nice enough to reach out to me, uh, Mr. Josh Dove, and ask, hey, you want to come check out one of these shows? And this is the one that's going to work out. Cool, cool. Hey, that reminds me. Uh, so what happened uh, last night at the uh, January 8th show? You know, it was uh, Elvis's birthday yesterday. That's right. And David Bowie's. And David Bowie's. And uh, you know what? I learned, and it was. I'm going to be honest, friends, it was my birthday yesterday. There he is. That's right. Not in the same league, but, you know, we're creative people. In a higher league. <laughs> but, you know, Raven Darkly, when he told me this, he told me that uh, Shirley Bassey has the uh, same birthday as well. I did not that know that. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever see that uh, video, um, History Repeating, by the Propeller Heads and Shirley Bassey? Never? It's the best video ever. All right. Just thought I'd let you know. I wish I could hear you better. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> 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 no. Okay. Anyways, um, let's see. What else is going on? Oh, hey. Happy birthday. Thank you, Susan Edwards. Appreciate that. Hey, Tracy. That's right. Thank you for the birthday. There you go. Our, our man here, Mr. West Coast Ramble, just celebrated his birthday. So, happy birthday to you. There you happy go. birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, dear Tom. Tom. Happy birthday. <laughs> that's great before the alcohol kicks in. That was a, that was a good one. <laughs> I didn't, oh, you're drinking, are you? What? I don't know. Also, a belated birthday to our friend Tracy Dick. There you uh, go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And thanks, Raven, for turning me on to Shirley Bassey's birthday. I appreciate that. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, hey, you know what? Oh, history so, repeating. What's that? I'll just, uh, Raven agrees with me that that's a great video, history repeating. There you go. Do, do your homework. I history repeating. <laughs> History repeating, and so is Tom. Hey. Good thing he has the window there. <laughs> there you go. Hey, uh, I got a question. Yes. Okay, on the uh, – what happened at the gig? Let, let's go over – we brought some photos, didn't you, of the gig last night? A couple photos from last night. Is I that true? did. Yeah, let's take a look at that. They're in that email that was discovered a few a minutes ago. A report from the field. A report yep. from the field. Here we go. Let's see what we got. Uh, let's see. Let's see. This is black here, but it looks like – hey, talking about social distortion – Hey, it's Brent. Yeah, it was really good to see him again. Brent Hardy. Yep. And uh, I'll be seeing him tomorrow. One of my favorite people, really amazing bass player. I've had the pleasure of him backing me up once, and that was amazing. Can't yeah. speak more about it. Didn't he started out with uh, Deke Dickerson, didn't he? I believe so. And he also he backs up James Inveld sometimes. He's, he plays with a bunch of heavy hitters, but the heaviest is Social D for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then uh, okay, another shot of this guy. You guys were hanging out. There we go. Oh, that's James. shoot. I forgot I was there, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's James, from uh, formerly from Tiger Army. And uh, I think it was the first time I actually met him in person yesterday. And uh, in the, the most polite, forceful way ever, he said, I know who you are. And that was pretty humbling. That's pretty Hey, <laughs> Paul, I got a question for you. How come everyone dresses like in their in their stylish clothes and you always have like a jersey on or like a lightning bolt thing? Are, are you like into I mean, soccer or what do you into? I felt like I was a little bit in uniform because like Tommy Harkenrider and all these other dudes literally had the Canadian tuxedos on like I did. But the Chargers, they limped their way into the playoffs. We're oh. going to play Jacksonville on Saturday and I hope we continue and win. Oh, right on, man. That's so cool. Bolts up, baby. Okay. And also, Paul, you uh, let's see. You had uh, put up a couple of uh, you had a couple of uh, videos, did you not? Of uh, what Is this happened? One of the videos? We no, got a few. Oh, no, that's just you guys live. You confused me, man. <laughs> yeah, we got a few videos we can check out. Let's see what we got. Okay, let's see. And we it, might have somebody waiting in the wings. Do we have someone waiting in the wings? I'm checking. I don't see him there. Not yet. No. <clears throat> Give that guy a text. Any minute. Okay. Any minute now. Hey, and this this is a good time. You know, friends, <laughs> I, I hate to do this to, to you, but you know. Uh, we we have our Venmo and our PayPal. If you guys want to uh, send any money our way, it goes to uh, helping. Well, helping I, Tom. <laughs> helping Tom the most. No, yeah. I, I had to buy like this mic, and then I had to buy this headphones and stuff like that. But jokes, uh, Uncle Esteban. Uh, Esteban wants jokes. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're, Dio, we're, Dio. We're, hey, we're gonna get to that. Tom doesn't like to do it, Uncle. So no, I, you gotta uh, ask for it every no, time. No, we'll do it. We'll do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, while we're waiting for our special guest, Paul, can you check on that? We're going to check out some videos. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's see. What have we got here? Do, 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 do. This, is, this, was, hey, this was just because exhibit, it was such a cool show. Exhibit A. Exhibit A. <laughs> exhibit here it a. comes, guys. Hey, uh, oh, thank you, Christopher. I saw that. Yeah, wh wh what happened? He said he'll give me a front row seat next time, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to bother him. I'm happy hey, to stand in the back. Is this going out of, on uh, YouTube? Because I don't see it here. Oh, it should be. It's on Facebook still. So that's yeah, I know, but okay. hey, hey, uh oh, hold on uh -oh. a second. We speaking of speaking of. Uh, it's not on YouTube right now. Hey, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, we got a. We got somebody waiting in the wings. There's someone waiting in the wings. Do you mind we bring him up now? Is that okay? Should Can we, please well, let me show that one other video really quick? Okay, we're going to do one other video. One other video. A little teaser. Okay, yeah. And so, uh, Not that one. Okay. 
No, this one? Oh, the, this one, okay. Yeah, you know. Here we go. Oh, well, this is uh, Matt Cardino tapping on the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about this, though. Well, he's not making leather boots. The guy is, like, incredibly talented. Yeah, I have never seen Matt pull this technique off. Not saying he can't, but it was really cool to see. I was zooming in as much as I can. I have another video that isn't as good as this because I'm just zooming into his fingers. And he was nice enough to talk to me after the show and explain it for like five minutes. Just an outstanding guy. And also, just Johnny Baller, one of my heroes, always has been, always will be. Amazing bassist. I couldn't get a good, they kept surprising me with the bass solos, so I couldn't get a good video of him slapping away, but I've told the story a thousand times. I've seen that guy play a right-handed bass yeah, no, like too. nothing. Yeah. So he's a master. Happy to see him again. Yeah. I think we got one more video that's going to be the perfect teaser. Okay. Uh oh, and there's Mama. Okay, here we go. Yep, and she says no YouTube. Oh. Oh, that's terrible. Here we go. <laughs> Which is great. Oh my god, Eddie, you're so fucking awesome, dude. Are you excited to come on the show tomorrow? Nah. <laughs> and with that, we welcome to the show. What kind of girl? Eddie. Friend Denny. There he, <laughs> there is. he is. Hey. Hey boys. Welcome. How y'all doing? <clears throat> Eddie floating head Clint Denny. <laughs> that's right. Man. I wanted to go for a, uh, a zombie sort of look there. There you go. <laughs> well, man, I have I have some pressing uh, pressing concern, a really important question to ask you, man. I know you're working hard. You wanted to be here in person, and something tr you know very serious came up. That's right. So, Eddie, in all sincerity, I do ask, how was your pussy? I, uh, I appreciate everyone out there uh, in the internet land and their concern, and I, I'm proud to say that the pussy came through just fine. She's doing Good. great, and uh, yeah, she's gonna be she's gonna be a okay. Good. I, uh, I for those out there who uh, aren't aren't aware, I, uh, I I adopted a little feral kitten over Christmas uh, while I was down working in Florida, and she had a little hernia we had to get taken care of, so. She's uh she's all good now. Yeah, in all seriousness though, that's it's a it's you're treating it like a family member. We would all do the same thing. So That's right. Good job. I hope that we and, hope uh, she heals soon, man. I also have to say I'm Robert, I'm still I'm I'm really bummed out we didn't get you up yesterday, man. I'm so sorry yeah. that we, I th we Oh oh you wanted me? I thought you were talking to that John Burroughs fella. Oh well, John Bur John Burroughs, yeah. yeah no, the, the, uh, uh, what happened uh, uh for the listeners at home? Eddie um Asked me in a roundabout way uh, if I would like to come up and do a song, and I had a drink in my hand, and I said, "Yeah," and I said, "Like now or after the next song?" And he thought I was saying, "No, hey, I'm I'm gonna have a drink." No, I'm I'm busy. Yeah, I'm busy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was standing there waiting, and then I waited. The next song, next song. I was like, oh, uh -huh. dude, "Forget this guy." But yeah, a little I, uh... miscommunication. But that meant more from you, which was I didn't hear any complaints. Well, I, I was talking to the boys after, and I was like, man, we, sh we didn't get Robert up. And they were like, I thought he didn't want to. So it wasn't the whole band thought you were like, no, no. Oh, 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 oh no. But, but I got to say, you got up and did that uh, I'll Never Let You Go, Little Darling, with us one time before, which is one of the Elvis Sun Cuts. Yeah. And uh, that version and the way you kind of led the band and, and into the, you know, the, it, for those that don't know, it has a sort of ballad section, and then it goes up to up-tempo. And you just did you did such a good job of kind of leading us all through it because we had never played it before. And it's one of my favorite little clips I have of us in the band playing. And so oh, I wish sweet, we could. Thank you. Wish we could have done it again, but next time we'll, we'll figure and, it out. And thanks for asking, you know. Absolutely. And it's cool to hear you doing that material. I know later in the night you uh, did some of your yes. own yeah. your own songs and some other things. Yeah. But what but doing it, the uh, unheard Elvis thing is is that That'd be cool if that was an official show. I know you've done, I guess you, the night before you did that, and maybe, I'm not sure if you've done that before, but as a like a stage production, that would be a great concept for a show. Is that, yeah, have you thought about that, doing that? 
that's generally the idea. Um, so we, we got the full record that we did of all these yeah. songs com coming out soon. And once we get that well, sort of in our, in our hands, uh, ideally, we'd like to present it to people. And based on the reaction last night, I'm feeling pretty good about uh, the concept. I, I wasn't sure if the Elvis fans would latch on to songs that they weren't familiar with, you know, but it seems like people really enjoyed kind of learning some of the history about yeah. that material. And, and for, for, you know, for the folks uh, watching it right now who weren't able to be there, well, it, it was packed out. It, it, yeah, I, I think it was sold out. Was it, sold it, out. It, there was no room to, we couldn't have, uh, fit any more in there but it was such a great atmosphere and people were really digging it so well done my friend yeah and and uh, i know i mentioned this last night but me and johnny bowler we've been in florida for since october working like in a christmas theme show and uh man you know sometimes you know singing singing jingle bells into people's faces like before <laughs> thanksgiving and so it can be uh, a bit of a monotonous thing i mean it's a lot of fun with the guys i was working with and stuff but Thinking about this show and this little run of gigs and stuff was kind of what kept me going. And boy, the the crowd at there at Campus Jacks really showed out and, and gave a lot of love. And it 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 was exactly what my heart needed. I was I was missing that sort oh, of that's nice. thing. And it, it it did me a lot of good too. And and I, I I had such a good time last night. Hell yeah, dude! I've seen a lot of shows and been a part of a lot of shows at Campus Jacks, and that energy might have been the best I've seen in a long time. Yeah. And awesome. I can tell you that he's not just putting that on for the for this the broadcast. Such, yeah. He's he that's what he was saying to me earlier this evening when we got together here. So he, I know he means that from the heart. Sure. That's great. That's great to hear. And and like I said, that gives me a lot of a lot of encouragement for the album. And I hope people really like it because we went we went as nerdy as we could uh, as far as like the details that we put into everything. And and, and uh, so yeah, I, I'm I'm excited to get it out for everybody. Yeah, one thing I want to say too, like. A really cool thing you do with some of these Elvis songs is you guys imagine what would have been if they, because you say like, oh, this was only just a little demo that they didn't finish for this song. So we just tried to make it be the full song. That's a really cool treat. And like, it was a music lesson for me too. I didn't know any of those off cut Elvis songs. Yeah, there's there's so many little tape fragments and, and live performances that are scratchy and hard to hear and stuff, but it kind of gives you a, uh, a chance to, to go in and say like, well, these guys were on to something. If they would have took that into the studio and really yeah. fleshed it out, what would that sound like? And I mean, some of those songs, I mean, it's not because they're bad songs or, or what they were doing were bad. It just kind of, I think the time frame with the sale of Elvis from Sun Records to RCA, songs just kind of got lost in the mix or, you know, I'm sure they had licensing issues with, you know, copy or uh, songwriter credits and all those things that deals couldn't be worked out. So some songs just got abandoned, and it's it's unfortunate, but it's fun to kind of imagine what if, you know. Well, I appreciate it for that for that reason that it, it's some of the detail that has been lost over the years. Because, man, I, I know you you've thought about this a lot, and a lot of us think about it all the time. We grew up thinking about this. What a whirlwind of events he was caught up when this was all going down, and and there were so yeah. many other details that have been fallen by the wayside. Everybody yeah. knows the sort of whittled down, accepted story, but this adds yeah. to the whole picture. So it's really cool that you're doing that. Yeah, and if, if you think about it, that all happened in 18 months' time, from yeah. him having never played a, a show for people before, never recorded in a studio, to him basically being the you know on the top of the charts and on television and, and going to making a movie and being on one of the largest record labels. Like it, it was 18 months. I mean, that from from going from abject poverty to the biggest star in the world in that amount of time, it's, I mean, a whirlwind is really the only way you could describe it. And of course, things are going to fall by the wayside and, and uh, legends are going to kind of get embellished and stuff. So it is yeah. fun to get into the, uh, the actual history of it all. Well, I got a random question for you. What do you think right of uh, the movie, <clears throat> the most recent movie? You know what's funny? I just saw it for the first time a few days ago. Um, I kind of avoided it because I had heard some of the soundtrack, and that's not really my... Yeah. Thing. I understand why it has to be done and why those choices are made. I totally get that. Yeah. Having worked in the musical theater world and, and you know, you want to you want to have a young audience excited about your project and you want to find a way to make these old things relevant to them in a in their language. And that all makes sense to me, but I'm 
I'm very much, uh, I get lost in the history of it and, and things, and those sort of things take me out of it. But I watched it. Um, I think my takeaway is it's not a movie made for guys like me. Ah. Um, everyone's heart was in the right place. Some of the performances were really good. The thing that I thought would have made it a better film is, and it's a lot of biopics do this, they kind of miss the joy and the fun of a lot of that music and a lot of the good things that happen in someone's life in favor of focusing on the drama right. and the, mm. you know, and the dark, the dark stuff. And I think if you're, especially that early first half of the movie and even into the, the uh, movies and stuff, you really, uh, from what I know about studying Elvis, that guy was having a ball. I mean, his career maybe had ups and downs and everybody's life, you know, there's lots of gray and in, in the black and white, but, but there was a lot of joy and a lot of goofing around, a lot of fun, and, and you kind of don't get any of that in any of those biopics. And that, I think, uh, makes you care about a character. I mean, this is all like script uh, and you know, craft and stuff, uh, things that uh, an average watcher wouldn't care about. But if you're talking about someone's life, I think it's important to, to really focus on the, the good times as much as the bad. And so you get the mix and you, and you care about why it's a, such a sad thing when things do go bad, you know, because they have these great, this great thing. And, you know, and Elvis and the Blue Moon Boys, there's a lot of drama in the way those guys were treated throughout the history of all that and stuff. And, um, but, but why, why do you care about that them as a team? And why did they work so well together? And, you know, those are the things that I would love to, to see in a movie and they weren't there. So that's my takeaway. But man, uh, Austin Butler, you can tell that guy really put everything he had into it, and uh, I like that. Yeah, I like that dude, man. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm yeah. really happy for him. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the he did a good He's job. been getting since, and, and, and uh, you know, he's an Anaheim boy. Uh, That's right. So, like, you know, my hometown. Uh, so, yeah, I, I feel I'm really happy for the attention he's getting. I thought he did a fantastic, fantastic job. You he, know, he, he was giving, he's a he's a standout. Absolutely, he he did an amazing job, and the level of detail and care you can tell that he put into just little things that a casual Elvis fan wouldn't even pick up on but guys like us probably noticed he really studied and, and worked hard and you can tell that he put a lot of care into it yeah. and, and he seems like a uh, like a humble guy too and, and kind of like a, a kind of mirroring this, at least what we like to think of it, the early Elvis was like and kind of that you know yeah yes ma'am and you know that yeah he has a he has a bit of that going on you know uh, absolutely absolutely yeah you want you want your uh you want those stars and heroes to be nice guys and and uh and in interviews and stuff you can only you can only get what they're giving you but he seems like a like a real sweet yeah. kid and like his heart's in the right place I, I like what you're saying though about the just showing the dark side of things and and people you know people always say you know well the ha we people don't want to see the happy stuff as that doesn't sell yeah i think that's a bunch of crap because yeah i've daydreamed about what it was like for him there and i always think about like the fun and how oh my lord what, what it must have been like it you know you know what i mean man you know Absolutely. like focus on that a little bit but anyway i i, I ended up enjoying it but with yeah. a lot of reservations, you know. It's, a, it's definitely a Baz Luhrmann, you know, if you've exactly. seen his other movies, it's definitely that sort of presentation. Um, and you can really get lost in the visuals were incredible, the way they kind of did all that. I mean, it was it was a beautiful movie, you know. I, yeah. I, mean, I just, you know, everybody's got their opinion. You can Monday morning quarterback it all you want. I would have yeah. embellished different areas of the story, like you said, you know. And it makes you care about someone. It makes you care about a story to, to see the joy and the love and, and the relationships uh, being enjoyed between people. Uh, and a lot of those biopics miss that in favor of, you know, Did, the, being involved in, in, in the mil, uh, million dollar quartet thing and or like you, yourself and anybody uh, in, in that camp, did anybody reach out to any of, of you for any input in the movie or any sort of a, I've been so far removed. I mean, I know I just did. I do some little regional million dollar quartets here and there. If it's, a, you know, sometimes some of the old guys that I acted with will be directing a production or something. And it's fun to go back and work with old friends. But I mean, it's been, you know, over 10 years. It was 2008, the first one I did. And the last one, main production I did was, you know, 2013, I think. So it's been a good 10 years. I've been away from all that. Yeah. So I'm not actually, I'm not actually sure. Uh, yeah. 
I know uh, the the voice of Little Richard in the movie is a, a buddy of mine, Les Green, from down in Florida, and I thought that was great that they got him. Uh, he's not the actor in the movie, but it's his voice you hear, and uh, he's one of my favorite modern performers nowadays. And uh, so they they definitely went out and and uh, tapped into you know some of the the live uh, band talent that that's working around today and gave some people some opportunities. So, uh, but I'm not sure specifically. I don't know. I remember Chris McGee had a post saying that that your friend doing uh, was Little Richard uh, should have got his he should get his own movie like that's how that was like the only thing that Chris McGee took from the whole Elvis movie. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, they 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 made what a, a Little Richard movie before uh, well, with him back. though with that actor. Well, when I saw that yeah. guy yeah. doing his thing, I thought like, Little Richard or not, it's just like this this guy's cool. Like yeah. he can do very his own dynamic. Thing. Yeah, very dynamic. It, it was fun to watch that. That scene and, and some of the, yeah some of the blues joints and, and things that they they showed I that's another thing I would love more of that kind of so yeah a whole movie I'd be I'd be in hundred percent yeah all right well now as far as I I got a question for you um, yeah Eddie you know uh got, we, you play music really well I've been seeing you a couple of times really like it. What are the odds of you guys doing something in our in our studio? What would what would we have to do to get you guys in our studio? I'll tell you, I, we wanted to, to be there today, and uh, we were trying to make it work any way we can. Um, I would love to. I, I love the show. Uh, you know, I, I've I've watched you know episodes that you guys have done before, and it, it's a fun uh, fun thing. And I'm I was really excited you asked me to be a part of it, and just trying to get the dates worked out. Uh, didn't quite come together, but I think we're going to try and make it happen maybe in March. Is that right? Yeah, March or early April, late March, early April. Yeah. So we're aiming Whichever for comes it. first. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> a birthday present to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I can't wait. It, it would be a lot of fun to be there with you guys right now. And uh, But we're going to make it happen, I promise. Absolutely. Nice. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, of course. He hits all these high profile shows like this. <laughs> no, you know what? No, I, I, wanna, like, I, I, I like be, to think I, we're the show of the people. Yeah, no, I want to be on with, uh, you know, with like-minded people and people that care about the music as much as I do. And, and uh, you know, and we can wax uh, intellectual about rock and roll all you want. But I've seen all you guys out on the dance floor at clubs and stuff. And I know you got the same enthusiasm for it that I do. So I'm, I'm always happy to uh, whatever I can for you guys. Let me know. Nice. I think we're going to disappoint the Elvis fans, though, because I'm really going to be pushing for your original stuff when you come into studio, man. I think I have, like, the I don't think Elvis collection. fans would be disappointed. You don't that. think so? <laughs> All right, good. I hope not. Well, well maybe, I'm, I'm uh, maybe, you. maybe when we come back, we can, uh, we can get Big Sandy up and we can do uh, I'll Never Let You Go, there Little you Darling, go. together. For the, yeah. We can do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready to go. I'm, I've been sucking on cough drops all day just so I could talk. I, I blew it out a little too hard last night. I was maybe a little too excited to have a, an audience in front of me. So, Well, you sounded great. Uh, Thank you. There was, a, I don't know if you caught that comment. I know Johnny Angel was saying, though, those vocals are amazing. He commented something like that when they showed your, your clip earlier of uh, Only You. Oh, that's nice. Johnny Angel, I, I love you, buddy, but I heard you skip the show for a football game. And I <laughs> Yeah, but I'm that sure that but that leaves that. us Queenie for ourselves. Yeah, that's, that's right. true. That's true. We had Miss Queenie all to ourselves. Boy, you got to be careful, Johnny. I respect Johnny for doing that. <laughs> all right, guys. Yeah, I, I, he ain't no fair weather fan. I guess that's <laughs> we could say that for him. Yeah. Well, so, well, speaking of waxing intellectual, isn't there another uh, element of the show? Wasn't there a trivia? The sort of <laughs> is that later? Uh oh. Uh, the trivia portion has been cut. That's right. <laughs> oh, we don't got the budget for Along it today, Along with the guys. hillbilly number. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I, <laughs> I, actually, I, I'm really interested in your take on that movie, on the Elvis movie. You know, because like, I, I always wonder what people from this scene really thought about it. But, you know, it, everyone tells me it was a good movie. I haven't seen it yet. But oh, you haven't, yeah. Tom? No, 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 I haven't. No, no. That's on HBO I, Max now. I waited and waited and waited. And uh, there was uh, one of the guys I worked with in Florida. He's a big movie guy. And he told me right as we were kind of ending the run of our shows that we were doing together, he said, Eddie, I want more than anything to sit down with you, get a little stoned and watch the Elvis movie and see what you think. And I said, all right, let's do it. So I sat down and we, uh, I don't know if we can talk about this. We, we, it's legal, right? So we yeah, loaded up a, yeah, we loaded up, a, we loaded up a bowl and we sat there and we munched on some snacks. A bowl of like a Couch Chocula? What are you talking about? 
That's right. Actually, I, I, I did end up eating a bowl of, uh, of, of cereal at the end of that. <laughs> it's, funny, it's funny you mentioned that. But, uh, but yeah, so we sat down and watched the movie and, and I gave him my full take. And uh, yeah, man, I, I mean, you can, you know, there's movies like the, the Buddy Holly story or something. And I'm always the guy who's like, why is he playing a, a Telecaster, you know, 70s Telecaster through a PV amp? Or, you know, I get really <laughs> lost in those details. And I know from the Elvis production, they the props guy like literally tried to build a Ray Butts Echosonic amp to spec, like go in, you know the, build it from the ground up for the movie. He ended up having some trouble, and they 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 kind of jerry rigged something. But I mean, they went that hard into the getting the details just correct. DJ had the the horse hide, uh, hair on hide, uh, bass drum with the copper mist drum kit and. Scotty had his 295 and then the L5 and the Super 4. Like, they really got all those details correct. And uh, so a nerd like me, I appreciate that kind of stuff. Well, it wasn't too far into the film where I noticed, like, you know, when they show the, a copy of That's Our Right Mama and it's in the, the sleeve. The sleeve. That, and yeah. I mean, they did a poor job of doing a repro of it. It's, it's like, yeah. well, you have all the money in the world and they, they didn't get a good looking pressing of that in the wrong sleeve and the, i thought okay i'm just gonna have to let go and just sit back and let it wash over me and the sleeve, if you look the like a, like burkhardt one. just mentioned there it is you know from the perspective of colonel parker but he's in the hospital he's sick he's on medication so if you look at it as a like a fever the yeah. colonel's fever dream well you yeah. know then it kind of works you know actually it, i enjoyed it i enjoyed it you know yeah. um the, and, the the sleeve was the one where i was like oh they blew it because yeah all the early sun came in paper brown sleeves those the the sun logo on the sleeve that was shelby singleton right introduced yes that no, yeah. well, see, you, you would know what I'm talking about, but you, the average person, wouldn't know that. But those are the things that yeah. uh, it can take you out of the moment. And but yeah, what do you think of Tom Hanks? I, I thought it was a really good performance. I, he was a good kisser. I hear he's a good kisser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you? He, uh, uh, go ahead. he gets a lot of he gets a lot of grief for the accent and stuff. But Colonel was a immigrant, and he he had kind of a you know an interesting story living in Hawaii and Florida, and his accent was really strange. And I think people thought he was just doing some, you know, it was like uh, Dick Van Dyke uh, with his cocky. <laughs> uh, a lot of the reviews I read, they were really raking him over the coals. But I think Tom Hanks is, he's another guy, he's a record collector. And I know he's, you know, that thing you do, I think is one of the most historically accurate yeah. movies ever done. He really, he knows what he's doing and I trust him. And I thought he did a great job. I, th yeah. I thought he was fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. You root against him. You don't like him the whole movie. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. You're not supposed to walk away, you know, with any sort of love or respect for the Colonel that he's the perfect villain for any story. I like, and you're I've almost kind of, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're almost kind of happy. Like he gets screwed in the very end and every, like. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, karma, karma catches up with exactly. everyone and, and that's what you want in a. But there's even a, darker stories tale. that they didn't get into. There's other. Yes. theories about why he left the Netherlands and they That's didn't right. they didn't go into any of uh, why he never wanted to go yeah yeah it's there's allegedly yeah allegedly. yeah 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 <laughs> you got to always put that in there for legal reasons right you don't want the any estates coming after you but yeah that that I encourage the the Alana Nash book yes uh, yeah the colonel is yeah. very interesting you, see, you know what I'm talking about gets, a, yeah. gets into that yeah and I recommend that and also Alana Nash baby let's play house are my two Next to the Peter Gralnick Bibles, the two tomes. That, that's really Elvis it, life. isn't it? Yeah, it is like a, yeah. the Bible of, of this a whole story. Yeah. Um, those are two books I always recommend to people. Is those two Alana Nash ones? She does. She has another good one on the Memphis Mafia and their sort of interpersonal relationships. I haven't read that one. Yeah, I need. I need to. It's good. It's good. Yeah. It's a lot of the same stories from different perspectives. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel like a lot of people get more excited <clears throat> for Baby Let's Play House now? When you play uh, yeah. live. So uh, we played the night before last night at uh, Club Congress down in Tucson, and uh, we didn't know they had a kind of hip hop DJ right after us. All right. <laughs> so so some of, some of that crowd was wandering in as we were finishing up, and we did Baby Let's Play House, and there was a, a whole group of them that started dancing the minute we started playing it. <laughs> and I I thought to myself, I said the the movie did that. Elvis the movie, movie yep. the movie made that happen. Yeah. Well. Well, that's cool. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. That, that's a good. That's, no, it's that's, great. <clears throat> that's what I want to see. I want to. I want to bring this music to people that that might not uh, be exposed to it on a regular basis, and I want to show them why it's still viable and still important and uh, still rocks. 
I, I know we're, we're kind of uh, running long here, but uh, can we talk about the rough the rough housers? Yeah, please. Absolutely, absolutely. I would love to. Yeah, uh, me and uh, a very talented friend of yours who a- appears on uh, one of your albums, also Miss Gray Delisle, uh, one of the most uh, well known cartoon voiceover actresses in the world. We uh, we got to meet uh, kind of via the internet during COVID and talking about how she uh, sings all these songs to her kids and makes up silly stuff and. And I've always wanted to do a project for kids. I love performing for kids because they really have no inhibitions about what they like and what they don't like. And they're kind of the best audience to uh, bounce things off of. So I said, we got to start a kids project. Let's do music for kids, but let's not make, you know, no baby shark. Let's make it rock and roll. And let's, you know, let's, let's indoctrinate these kids. Let's, let's, uh, meld their minds and uh, give them some Bo Diddley and some Chuck Berry and, you know, a little taste of all those things in a, in a package that they'll like and that the parents can stomach too. And uh, she's just such a machine the way she, she writes songs and comes up and you give her one little, (laughs) you give her one little phrase or something. And 20 minutes later, she's like, I I wrote four songs on the toilet or whatever, you know, she's amazing. And it's, it's hard to keep up with how fast her brain works, but She's been the fun, most fun partner for this. She's great and silly and so talented and effortless. And then we made all these goofy music videos and all of that stuff kind of came out of her brain. And then, you know, I just kind of helped steer it musically with uh, Deke Dickerson, uh, Murray Hammond from the old 97s, Carl Sonny Leland, uh, who's a buddy of all of ours. Um, we had uh, uh, DJ Bonebreak on drums for a lot of that. And uh, we just we made all these goofy songs and put an album together and then made these fun music videos and uh, it's it's been doing well it's been getting a lot of radio airplay on different stuff and grownups have received it well which it was the ultimate uh, you know goal uh, you know after the kids and uh, man it's just fun to it's fun to be silly I don't want to be serious all the time uh, you know man, I'm... oh oh yeah <laughs> we know that buddy <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm horrible with names and ignorant, but who's who's the voice actress? Gray, oh, Gray. Delisle is her name. Gray yeah, Delisle. Gray Delisle. Who, who does she yeah. do? Like who does she who does she voice? You know what? You should look up her on the IMDb. It's, There's the list. The you keep ones. scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. It's too many. The biggest ones I would say are probably a Daphne on Scooby Doo. Oh. Um, okay. Okay. She's uh, on The Simpsons. She's Martin Prince and uh, I think Sherry and Terry. I have an idea and, now. Duffman's daughter. She she's uh, um, she's also Azusa in the Last Airbender. Uh, okay. She's in a lot of stuff. It's like Big Sandy said. It's the list is huge, um, but she she loves roots music and uh, you know we've been working on some of her own solo stuff too that's going to be coming out and uh, man she's just she's so creative and and so much fun to work with. Mind bending. How what, what comes out of that woman? You know I, she wrote. Like, she wrote a song about a just a little turn of phrase you said in passing in conversation. Yes. I remember. Uh, I like the way you think. I think right. Yeah. And you said you said that'd be a good song for Gray. We should, and I texted it to her, and like twenty minutes later, she had a whole song written about it. Wow. And it, and, and the songs are good. They're not. You know, it's not. Uh, you know, your sort of canned. You know, cheesy poetry lyrics. You know, she really is creative and and clever. Well, I feel very proud and lucky and, and blessed, to, and, and it's fun to have like a just a sea of talented people around me. But she she stands out, man. She's talent, on another talent, level. Talent, like yes, on yeah. another level. Yeah. And your and, and your songs are like that too. I've always loved the stuff that you write because it's it's so familiar yet so like there's always ideas where I'm like, man, I never would have thought of that. That's brilliant and. Uh, and the, you, you're good at telling a story kind of in a Tom T. hallway with a lot of the songs you write. And oh. You've always been someone I look up to in that way, too. Uh, you have that, oh, good you have that creative you. brain. Don't make me cry. No, thanks. <laughs> you're no, only points with my mom there. On, uh, we're, <laughs> we're very lucky to live in a, in a time in, in all you know, history where there's a big Sandy out there. You know, it's a, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. When people say, uh, wouldn't you love to go back to the 50s? Uh, you know, yes, for some things, but I'm very... I love the time I'm living in, and I love the people I get to work with Amen. and hang around with. I'm with you on that, buddy. Nice. Yeah. Yep. You know, there is one thing I want to push for you. You, sir, are nominated for Rockabilly right. Male of the Year Meripolitan right. Awards. How does that feel, sir? 
You know, I love I love that Ameripolitan community that Dale has cultivated, and the awards are a fun time to hang out and stuff. I've I always I've been nominated a, a couple times now, and it's always a singular thing. It's a rockabilly male, and I know they have a rockabilly group, and I've always thought of my band as a as a, us as a group, even though it's my name is in front. Uh, I wouldn't sound as good without the guys that work with me, and the fact that they want to work with me is always uh, I'm very thankful for that, and. Uh, so even though it is Rockabilly Mail, and I love everyone who, who turned out and voted, and you know hopefully we, we win this year, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody down there, I, I, I want to make sure that everyone knows that uh, no part of my brain do I think that I'm up there doing it alone. It's, it's really, it's all about the band, man. Those guys are amazing. See, he's already, he's already, already working on his uh, <laughs> acceptance <Yeah>. speech there. <laughs> well, that's and right, and I can't weigh in on it since I am one of, one of the uh, oh. hosts of the show, along with the aforementioned Great. Gray Delisle. That's, um, right. that's right. But, uh, yeah, a talented uh, set of artists that are up, up for the prize. And, yeah, man, yeah we've wish got you my all the category. best, my friend. My category has some uh, some very talented folks in it, and uh, and so do the other categories. And it's, it's I'm, hard I'm not. For me yeah. To, yeah. I won't be sad. I won't be sad to lose because uh, it's it's going to be to someone deserving, you know. <clears throat> Nick Roulette. I mean, oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, we'll be happens. looking forward to that the upcoming release. That's right. Of the and, uh, uh, the and we're working on we're working on uh, some original stuff, and we're going to get that in the can soon too. I'm not sure when that'll be out, but uh, but yeah, the Elvis release should be within the next couple months. Okay, well, that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think yeah, I think. Uh, and, well, and, thank uh, you for I, for coming on. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you want to say I, something? I just want to say uh, because I got some grief for this last night. Uh, a few people have tried to go on the web store to buy my album, and once the Elvis record is out, I'm gonna have the web store up and running again. Like it's just being revamped. So. Uh, so if you are out there trying to find my records, I know it can be a little frustrating sometimes, but you heard just get in here, touch folks. with me. Get in touch yeah. with me, and I'll I'll get you screened out. Yeah. All right. Heck yeah! Thank you again, Eddie. We really Thanks appreciate you me. joining by, and we cannot wait for you to be in here in March or April. We're gonna make it happen, man. Looking forward to it. Love you guys. Thanks All for right. having me Take on. Take care, buddy. Peace. Thank you, Peace. my man. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you go, guys. A good guy, isn't he? He's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Great, great, great guy. Well, guys, awesome band. Yeah, that was amazing to have. And Paul, so what do you think? If we could get uh, those, those guys, the Blue Ribbon Boys, in here, or would you want to try to do something at Club L, like do a big thing at Club L with a live audience and all that? Like maybe later. He just played down here, but maybe later on. What, what do you think? Well, one or the other. I'm not sure if Lloyd will be around. If he's not, I think we have room in here for it. But I'd love to do it at Club L. It'd be cool if we can get a live audience in for that show. Yeah, we'll see what brings us. You know, what time brings us. And that leads me to the next thing: is um, we're trying to do another West Coast Rumble live, maybe next month. And we're working on we're working on artists right now to get down there. But it's really mainly about you guys, like bringing a packing it full of people. Because you know, just the other night I was there, and they had a really good show with like a bunch of kid bands, and uh, it was packed. Like Club L is it's it's really fun. It was like just for the music, you know. It isn't just for you know, a, a certain crowd, but they, they packed it and they, you know, it, 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 it's, there's like no bar there or anything like that. Like Lloyd buys pizzas and stuff, but like everyone was there for the music and it was like packed out the door. So hopefully we could do that. The same thing with the West Coast Ramble live. Yeah. Uh, last show we did with Deke Dickerson last year was awesome. So uh, we'd like to do that again. So we'll, we'll keep you informed of that. So. Club L will be open Friday the 13th. If you're in uh, Orange County or Southern California, you want to check out Club L. That's a good show to come out and do it. The 13th, the Go-Getters and the Martinez Brothers, Club right. L in Anaheim. Yeah. Hey, you know what? We're, we're just about done here, but, you know, I, I we did get some letters from people. Uh-oh. Uh, oh, our, no. our sh- I'd rather do the jokes, but go ahead. Our show is back up. No, <laughs> no. Hey, uh, and some of these, some of these, uh, Big Sandy, this kind of pertains to you because we did uh, a segment on uh, West Coast Ramble Live was, Hey, Big Sandy, where people write in and, and they ask questions to Big Sandy. He's been around the world. He knows a lot of stuff, so... We're going to start with this first one. I got a question here. Someone wrote in. It's Atticus from Nebraska. said, I heard some of your Freddie Fender songs. What other Freddie Fender songs should I listen to to get a good introduction to his music? Well, so good songs to listen to by Freddie Fender. Well, um, being like a like a super, like an uber Freddie Fender fan, 
it's kind of tricky to say. Um, it's kind of tough to narrow it down to to even a handful of songs. But um, one of the songs that I covered on on that uh, tri- tribute record, um, "Wasted Days and Wasted Nights," is a good place to start. Like I, I would suggest going finding his original recording of that in the late fifties, and then comparing it with his re-recording of it in the 70s that that's the in the 70s version is the, the the version that actually became a hit so how he started out in his early days compared to what actually ended up working for him on the charts um and and there's an interesting story in between after you after you you uh, kind of uh hear those two sort of uh, uh bookends fill in the rest after that but Starting with that one song, Wasted Days and Wasted Nights, how he originally did it in the 50s compared to how he did it in the 70s. And that kind of tells the story of his progression, uh, his musical progression over the years. So thank you for the question. Yeah. Thank you. Who, who was that again? That, that was, uh, who was that? That was uh, Atticus from Nebraska. All right. So, yeah. Atticus? Atticus? Yeah, Atticus. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, Quite a name. Thank you. Nebraska. It's nice to have listeners out there. there. Yeah, we, we got and, I mean, watchers, observers. Yeah, we got it. We got them all over. Hey, I got another one for you. Uh, this one says, uh, "It's it's this is Joey." He doesn't say where he's from. It just says, "Who's hey, that?" Joey. Joey? It's yeah. not our Joey, is it? No, it Joey just says community. Joey. It doesn't say anything else. Okay. Uh, it says, "Hey, Big Sandy, you just got back from Europe. What was your best gig there?" Wow, my best gig in Europe. Um, well, I mentioned that. Um, well, most of them. Well. The bulk of the shows were in the UK, which was England, Scotland, went to Northern Ireland, Wales. There was a one-off show uh, in Switzerland. But of all the shows there, for me, um, Norwich. London was fantastic because uh, you yeah. know it's because it's London and it, and it was the uh, the one that was the most packed in there sold out, but Norwich was just a, a a cool pub, the kind of place I would like to hang out in whether I was playing or not, and um, uh, my girlfriend Ruth was able to come out with her son uh, uh, Gabriel Gabs Gabriel, and it was just a special thing for me. Uh, to be able to do a show there and, and have have them be be there with me along with uh with, with her friends and uh that also had uh, one of our other friends Kevin Plain who sat in with us on saxophone and it was just it wasn't the biggest show it wasn't the big you know the biggest stage the most you know in the headlight sort of situation but like I said, just uh, I, I like hanging out at bars and over there in pubs, just a regular place that I would go to anyway. So that was that was the most fun for me in Norwich. Nice. Yeah, it sounds pretty cool. Well, we got a couple more for uh, Hey Big Sandy. It says, here's uh, Susan Smith from Costa Mesa. Who's that? Uh, Susan Smith. Susan Smith. From Costa Mesa. Says, I, I recently moved to Southern California from Alabama. Should I be worried about hurricanes now that we are getting all this rain? Hmm. Alabama. He said that's Susan, right? Okay. Yeah, that's uh, Susan from Costa Mesa. Yeah. Well, well, well first off, Susan, well, welcome to to, to California. Uh, should you be worried about hurricanes here? Um, well, in a nutshell, no. Hurricanes, uh, they kind of need uh, an ocean temperature of at least 79 degrees to build momentum due to trade winds, uh, our coast is treated to oceanic rivers of cold water. And, they, and those cold waters come from the northern reaches of the Pacific Oceans. So, Susan, we thank you for your question. But to sum it up, no, you needn't worry. That's amazing, Big Sad. I, I know you knew about music, but I didn't know you knew about, like, uh, ocean temperatures and things well, like that. Well, uh, I like to Google things in my off time. And... Uh, I like to Google off every now and then. I guess you could say. <laughs> I, I don't know what that means, but you know, Big Sandy, we got another. We got one more. We got more. One more question. Maybe it's a music question. Um, okay, this is uh, Charles Parker from Leeds, UK. Oh. Hey, Big Sandy. I've been working from home, and there is a squawking bird out my window. It goes all day and won't shut up. 
What can I do? Well, uh, and you said his name is Charles? Charlie Parker. Yeah, it's, uh, Charles Parker. <laughs> is that his real name? I, I don't, I'm just reading the First the of letter. all, first off, is that your real name, buddy? Um, well, well, Charles, we'll just call him Char, Char, Chuck. Chuck, we'll call him whatever, Chuck. You, whatever you call him, you're the boss. Seeing actually. that you're from the UK, I would say you're probably hearing the rain call of the common uh, chuffinch. Uh, you know, the squawking uh, can go on for hours and hours. I recommend listening to the Eagles of Death Metal incessantly over and over and over again to drown out the sound. Um, my guys here, do you concur on that? Anyway, that's my suggestion to you, Charles, and I thank you for your question. Hey, man, that's thank you, Big Sandy. I do concur. I like how you incorporated science into music. Well, that's what I do. I think people who are people who know know me know that that's what I'm all about. Yeah, science and music. Right on. So that's Big Sandy. That's Hey Big Sandy. Hey. Snag an answer. All right, friends. This you know this brings us back to, uh, pretty much to the end of our show. And you know what we like to do uh, end of our show with jokes. Oh. And, the, and the guys have worked up some really good. Are jokes. there still people out there? Yeah, we've got 40 people watching. Oh. Although it says 39 here. Oh, uh, well. And, and nobody on YouTube. I'm just rounding up. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tracy, thank you for the clapping. Thank you for the clapping. Hey, we still got more show. We got uh, we got the jokes. I'm going to whip out the uh, guitar here. All right. Come on, birthday boy. I'm ready for the uh, 1625. Don't mess up. 1625. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm just going to cut. Well, let's, let's see if we can do this. Shall we Rochambeau to see who goes first? Yeah, who's going to go first? You go first. I'll go first. Oh, oh. Uh, you, uh, I'll go first, so okay. you can do the last one. All right. Okay. All right. Here yeah. we go. Hey, this is Paul, by the way. Having a round of applause for a man, Paul. Paul. I got a little worried. So I, I, w- I was just skimming through my news feed on my thing. I, I saw something about the Pope passing away, and it wasn't you. Right. It wasn't you. It right? was Benedict. It was yeah, Benedict. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got it. I'm still here, guys. I'm still here. All right. Here we- <laughs> Paul. Yes. Well, who's who's going first with a joke? I am. Big okay, Big Sam, here we go. Hey, Paul. Hey, Big Sandy. Tell me. Tell you what. What was Dr. Frankenstein's New Year's resolution? I don't know, Big Sandy. What was Dr. Frankenstein's New Year's resolution? To make new friends. Ah. <laughs> you, can, you can laugh along at home, please. Oh, we, we got half a chuckle out of Tom. <laughs> hey, Big Sandy. Yeah, Paul. Paul. What is the snowman's New Year's resolution? You know, I do not know. What is the snowman's New Year's resolution? To chill out more, bro. <laughs> hey, and you know what? As I'm sitting here, I'm noticing how perfectly the color of Tom's shirt matches that stripe in your in your jumper, as they say in England. We call them sweaters. They call them jumpers. Yeah, we planned it. We did. We coordinated it and the shoes too and the glasses yep and your chonies right they yep. probably match yep. yellow on front brown and back anyway Commando. hey hey if we, <laughs> if we wore them hey paul hey big sandy what did adam say on <laughs> december 31st what did adam say on december 31st i don't know big sandy what did adam say on december 31st it's new year's eve Oh, that's a Tom kind of a joke. Yeah, Adam Eve. Kind of yeah, I think I, I got one for Tom here. All right. Hey, Big Sandy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what, do, what do New Year's parades have in common with Santa Claus? Huh? What do New Year's parades have in common with Santa Claus, Big Sandy? Well, I don't know, Paul. What do New Year's parades have in common with Santa Claus? No one is ever awake to see them. No one's ever awake to see them. <laughs> to see them. <laughs> because, well, I, I guess that because they are oh, so early. And, Pass out. Oh, I don't know. That, speak for yourself, son. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how you would know this, but you seem to know a lot. My, uh, you've surprised me over the, the couple of years we've been doing, the three years we've been doing the West Coast Ramble. But tell me, Paul Paul. Yes, sir. What was my number one 
New Year's. What was my number one New Year's resolution? Uh, I don't know. What is Big Sandy's number one New Year's resolution? To stop being so condescending. And for those of you who might not be aware, a condescending means like to talk talk down to people. Because <laughs> you're condescending, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. At least you're not constipated. Oh, hey, uh, I, hey, Paul. Hey, uh, I had another uh, New Year's <laughs> resolution. <laughs> What's that? Well. Turn into a Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> it's to not uh, let Tom stop playing. Hey, good night, everybody. Thank you for <laughs> tuning in. <laughs> All right, Big Sandy, what is party time? <laughs> Why is partying in Times Square overrated? <laughs> I don't know, Paul. Paul, what is partying? I mean, why is partying in Times Square? Why is partying in Times Square so overrated? A big ball gets dropped on you. I don't think you got that right. There he is. There's Tom hey, on guitar for you guys. There you go. Find the chord somewhere. Man, West Coast Ramble, thank you for tuning in. Before you go, go ahead and send a tip via Venmo or the very awkward PayPal that represents Tom's name somehow in some way. But we appreciate you hanging out with us. We will be back soon. We're going to have some more shows lining up for this big event in April. So make sure you're subscribed to us. Make sure you like the page and keep a lookout for when we're going to be doing another episode. Yeah, and uh, friends, if you get a chance, uh, go ahead and uh, look at the YouTube. I'm going to clip, put clips of our stuff together and put it on the YouTube. We're going to try to get the YouTube uh, page going. So if you don't mind going over to YouTube and click a like, and it, we can build the audience for that. And we're going to start uh, doing the YouTube uh, for our show. You'll find it on Facebook and on YouTube. And we're going to get our Instagram going a little bit more. And if you got any suggestions, anything, please, we want to be the show of the people. Let, let us know what gigs are going on. Uh, send us uh, gig videos, gig pictures, any of that stuff. We'd love to find out what's going on around. So thanks. We'd like to uh, have your help. Anything else? Any parting words, guys? Uh, I have a couple of party words uh, to, uh, you know, uh, wish a wonderful uh, 2023 to not to only to all of our uh, our viewers out there, but uh, a, a special word of thanks and uh, hoping you come back soon to all the guests we've had over the last three years. Thank you. In particular, uh, to Abby, we'd like to say Abby New Year. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I, I I wanted to tell you, I used to turn into that Dick Clark's New Year's thing every year. Every year, I could always count on a good time. I thought, well, <laughs> <laughs> then I started to realize, that they, what's the point of turning? Every year, they drop the ball. Oh, hey, hey, that's a good one. And with that, what's a little variation on here? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that's it. All right, good night, guys.